Hello and welcome to the Candidates Forum. Over the next uh, about 90 minutes, you'll be hearing uh, directly from the candidates in the April 7th election to help you make an informed vote on uh, that Tuesday. We'll have the candidates in the contested Calb City Council races. Uh, those are uh, wards 3, 5, and 7. And we begin with the race for DeKalb School Board. There are four seats on the school board up for election. Two candidates are on the ballot, while another five are write-in candidates. So voters uh, will need to be be prepared to write in names. They want to vote for one of those candidates. And since there are so many candidates in the school board race and a limited number of microphones, we'll uh, cover it over the next two segments. Uh, first, uh, we'll hear from uh, Fred uh, Solomon. I'm sorry, you got that first name wrong. Howard. Howard Sullivan, uh, a cut and paste error. Uh, Fred Davis Jr. and Ronald Adamson. Our uh, format is uh, opening statements for up to uh, one minute each. Excuse me, opening statements for up to two minutes each uh, from each candidate. Then uh, questions with responses of up to a minute each. And then closing statements for up to a minute for each candidate. Uh, Howard, uh, since uh, you, ha you have the uh, unusual microphone, we'll also give you the uh, pleasure of going first. Well, thank you, Scott, and thank you, Dalton, and WLBK for holding this forum. Uh, the election is, as you mentioned, on April 7th. I am one of the candidates that is on the ballot. I'm not hiding, and I'm going to be at the top of the ballot, very easy to find. So lest I say something that impresses you and you choose to vote for me, uh, just uh, know that I'm there. You don't even have to remember my name. Uh, I've been interested in education as a subject matter area and as something that people actually do since about 1975. Uh, along with that, I've had a pretty strong interest in the area of instructional design since about 1985. Uh, following through on that uh, interest, I have about 17 years of experience in the area of technical training, including having now gone to a PhD in instructional systems design uh, that was granted to me in, by Florida State in 2005. Uh, since then, I've been a manager of instructional design at the City Colleges of Chicago, where I also teach philosophy, an area in which I also have a master's degree. I've been a resident of DeKalb since 1987. Uh, and as part of the PhD studies, I ran into somebody who said, how would you like to come work in my office? I need somebody there who can do staff development. I didn't even know that you could actually do staff development for teachers, but by golly, I learned how. And I learned that I needed to be able to do this and to work with the teachers. And I suddenly found out that Superintendent Mueller, who believes, and I agree with him, that the real initiative that's coming down the line is in the area of staff development, particularly in getting people into the area of instructional coaching. So I'm hoping to support him in this endeavor, and thank you for listening and your time. That's uh, Howard Sullivan. Next, an opening statement from Fred Davis. Fred? Thank you, Scott. Yeah, my name is Fred Davis. I'm running as a write-in candidate. And the reason I'm running as a write-in candidate because I noticed on the ballot that only two people had run as a uh, you know, as legitimate candidates as Kerry Malott and Howard Solomon. And I, I was really surprised because as, you know, as issues as there is in education, as far as academics and financially, that uh, there were only two people. So I decided at that point that, that I was gonna run as a write-in candidate. Um, I served once before on the school board from 207 to 211. And we, you know, did some big things then and um, and actually that's, you know, got a small passion for that. And uh, it started out as a small passion. It's grown out to be much bigger. And so uh, I think the district is definitely going to have some, you know, issues uh, other than financially that they got to deal with. And I really want to be part of that. So that's, uh, again, that's why I decided to jump in as a write-in candidate. So thank you. That's Fred Davis Jr. Now an opening statement from Ron Adamson. Ron? Hi, Scott. Thanks for uh, allowing me to be here tonight and uh, introduce myself to everyone. I'm Ronald Adamson, Ron Adamson. I uh, live in DeKalb. I've lived here uh, about 16 years. I have uh, two children in the school district, so I have a, a long-term interest. They're young children. Uh, so I really want to see this district improve. You know, everywhere I go, uh, I work with work with people um, from area communities, and, and the number one thing they always tell me is, well, you know, what about the schools in DeKalb? You know, they, they have a, bla a bad... Uh, 
impression of our school district. So with this opportunity, with the changeover, so to speak, with the, the many openings on the ballot, I thought this would be a great opportunity to, to throw my hat in the ring and share some of my... Uh, uh, knowledge and expertise in there. I come from a manufacturing and a construction background with a focus on waste reduction and process improvement uh, as a tool maker and in construction management. So uh, I just kind of thought this was a natural, a natural thing to do. And I, I really care about our community. I've lived here for, for quite a while. I shop here. I'm raising my family here. And this is something I, I genuinely care about. I, you know, I, I, help my son with his homework. I go to the PTO meetings. I go to the PTA meetings, PTO, PTA. I always get them confused. I apologize for that. Uh, but, you know, we go and we do the movie nights. We do the functions. I know as teachers, you know, and I, I just think we've got, we've got, might have a rough road ahead of us, but I think we can find some creative and innovative, uh, inventive solutions to some of the problems. We've got a great bunch of people running for the board, so whoever makes it, I know we'll be in good hands. But I just want to thank you all for, for giving me this opportunity, and I appreciate it. That's Ronald Adamson. Uh, so we'll now move uh, to questions. Each candidate will have up to uh, one minute to respond. Uh, let's uh, this time uh, start with uh, Fred Davis. Uh, question one, the DeKalb School Board at their last meeting approved a three-year plan to provide every student in the district with a, uh, a tablet or a Chromebook computer for use at school and at home. Uh, do you support the one-to-one -one plan and should uh, any changes be made to the rollout? Right. Well, I'm not going to say that I disagree with it, but I think the timing is probably a little bad right now. I mean, it's like eight and a half million dollars over the next three years. So not knowing all that information, I would really like to know how they plan on paying for that. I would hate to see a teacher or two or even more lose a job down the road when we go to tighten up the budget because it's going to have to be dealt with. You cannot be running in a deficit forever. So sooner or later, we got to face that. And if it has to do with this, unfortunately, if, it, if, you know, if it's not the time, then we're going to have to do something about it. So I'm not totally against it, but I think the timing is really bad right now. That's I know it really doesn't answer the question, but I'm, just, I'm not really in favor right now because of the finances. That's uh, Fred Davis. The next response is from Ronald Adamson. You know, I, like I mentioned in the uh, forum last week, I think our children deserve the best. They truly do. But, yeah, the timing is bad. That's a lot of money. Where are we going to come up with that money? We don't want to raise taxes. I don't want to. Let me rephrase that. I don't want to see taxes go up. I don't want to see teachers lose their jobs. And I don't want to see the, educate, or the quality of our children's education be compromised. You know, but the big question on the table is how do we pay it? And that's where we need to cut waste. We need to get creative. We need to get innovative. And we need to get inventive, and we need some fi to find some interesting ways to make this work, if we can make it work. So it's, it's more of a question than an answer. How can we make this work? That's Ronald Adamson. The next response is from Howard Sullivan. The initiative to get all of the computers into place within the next three years is largely the result of the park test, which is mandated by the state that it must be given and it must be on computer. So these computers are coming. There's going to be large purchases of computers one way or another, and this is probably the most efficient way that it's going to happen. Uh, in speaking about efficiency, I certainly would demand that this be done under a competitive bidding type of process for the purchase of the actual devices and for consultancy involving the training of the staff who are going to use these things to help students to learn. I'm disappointed that we are being driven by a test rather than by actual educational need, but I support the use of technology in education. Thank you. That's Howard Sullivan. This is the WBLB K Candidates Forum. Uh, we're hearing from uh, three of the candidates uh, for DeKalb School Board in uh, this segment. We'll hear from uh, another two candidates in our next segment. Let's uh, go on to our uh, next question. Uh, this one will uh, start with uh, Ronald Adamson. Uh, would you support pursuing the creation of a 1% sales tax for school facilities or a property tax uh, referendum to help eliminate budget deficits? Ronald Adamson. I am not in favor of burdening this community anymore. We've got a solid working class community that is scraping together to make ends meet. And I, I can't in good conscience or good faith say that, yeah, you know what, let's raise taxes. 
I can't do that. I wouldn't appreciate that. You know, I mean, a lot of a lot of people in my neighborhood have lost their homes over the last few years, and I see it across DeKalb. I see foreclosures. Um, you know, we've watched the cost of fuel go up and down. We watch our neighbors drive further and further to to get to their jobs to make ends meet. So the answer is no. I'm not in favor of raising taxes unless it's absolutely necessary. But again, I believe that we can find alternative sources of income, methods of saving, and so forth. Thank you. That's Ronald Adamson. Next response from Howard Solomon. I'm not sure whether your question, Scott, was actually an either or uh, regarding whether a uh, sales tax is preferable to a property tax or not. So I'm going to take that part of the program and say sales taxes inherently are regressive. They are a burden to those who can least afford it because people have to buy things. Necessities of life are being taxed through that type of a program. So all things considered, a property tax is easier for me to swallow if a tax is necessary. I hope that one is not. Uh, but by and large, that's the path that I want to try to propose for answering this question. I don't like raising taxes, but if, if it must be, I prefer income first as a, pref as a preference, then property, then uh, sales. That's Howard Sullivan. And now the uh, next response from Fred Davis. You know, that's a good question because um, I've talked about this with a number of my friends, you know, about the sales tax, for instance. Then everybody would participate in it. Real estate taxes, that means us as taxpayers are going to go up and up and up and up. If you got people out here that are buying things and spending money, they're help contributing. But the, but the point is nobody wants any taxes or any taxes to go higher, any more added taxes. So, again, it comes right down to we've got to be creative and find a way to make it happen, you know. So, you know, I, I don't want to see my real estate taxes go up any higher, and I guess nobody likes taxes, period. All right. So. Uh, and then, uh, uh, no, we started with Ron. <laughs> uh, final question. Uh, money has been spent to make the uh, physical conditions uh, more equitable uh, between the school buildings. Uh, what should be done to make sure students are receiving the same quality of education, regardless of uh, which school building they attend? Uh, and this one will start with uh, Howard Sullivan. Well, I agree with the superintendent's idea of, in, of using instructional coaches to try to uh, facilitate faculty development. In addition, there are the usual things that are done and we need to keep them done, the regular teacher institute days, uh, the kind of thing that I wondered when I was going to school, what happens to these teachers? Uh, this is when they actually become better at teaching. And they do this through conferencing with each other. They do this through providing mentorship to each other. They do this through uh, hearing from people. They do this through going out and getting more advanced degrees into the school system. So, and by the way, there are going to be another uh, 50 teachers recruited by the district over the next year or thereabouts. And those, the recruitment process also needs to be done. And there are people there that have done excellent recruiting previously. So that's it. That's uh, Howard Sullivan. The next response from Fred Davis. You know, talking about uh, the teachers and academics and so on, um, I, I personally, I work in an elementary school. And um, I'm there. I get to watch teachers you know, like on Teacher Institute days and how they work in groups. And, you know, it's all about staying on top of their game, you know, and better ways of teaching and how they come up with their plans. So it's, it's really kind of neat. And um, and I think, again, we fall back on, you know, teachers taking care of their parents, principals taking care of the teachers, and administrators taking care of principals. And, then, of course, you know, our job is to follow up on the data and see how things are working. And that's, uh, that's one part of the... Uh, the game we cannot lax on. We have to stay on top of that. That's Fred Davis, and now a response from Ronald Adamson. Active uh, mentorship is, is always key in developing 
every uh, across industry, across any form of employment. You know, the old saying is uh, iron sharpens iron, so to speak. Well, you know, like I said, our, our children deserve the best. And all these children, you know, they all learn a little bit differently. And they all have slightly different personalities. And we have to get the teachers to interact with them on, on their own level. And so the best way as parents and as, as a community we can do is we can communicate with our educational staff, you know, and we can come alongside them and they can mentor us and we can mentor them and we can all work together as a community to help the entire system get better. Thank you. That's Ronald Adamson. We'll now move to closing statements, uh, up to one minute uh, each on these, and uh, we'll start with uh, Fred Davis. Fred? Again, my name is Fred Davis. I've been a lifelong resident of DeKalb. Myself, my family, and my kids have all went through DeKalb School District uh, schools. It's a great town, great school district, and I appreciate your vote as a write-in candidate on April 7th. Thank you. That's Fred Davis. Uh, next uh, closing statement from Ronald Adamson. Ron Adamson, uh, running for school board. You can write my name in April 7th. Um, you know, I think we've got a fine bunch of people up here uh, that have the best interest of our community and our children at, at heart. Uh, so I'm, I'm honored and I'm pleasure to be part of it. And if you, if you choose to uh, write my name on April 7th, I promise I'll do the best I can to keep the community and our children uh, the focus, keep their education and our community the focus. Thank you. That's Ronald Adamson, and now a closing statement from Howard Solomon. Like Ron and Fred, I'm very pleased with quality of the people who are standing as candidates for this position. Uh, I point to a fairly long resume and an uh, awful lot of interest in educational institutions as the thing that recommends me among them and want to get involved with lending my services to the community through being a member of the school board. Thank you. That is Sau Howard Solomon. Uh, those are three of your candidates uh, for uh, DeKalb School Board. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for participating. And we'll hear from uh, two more DeKalb School Board candidates when the Candidates Forum continues. Welcome back to the Candidates Forum. Next, we hear from two more candidates for DeKalb School Board. They're Kerry Malott and Rick Smith. There are two more candidates for School Board, uh, James Mitchell and Michael Welch, who are not participating tonight. We'll begin with uh, opening statements. Begin with Kerry Malott. Oh, if Kerry, and actually both of you gentlemen, if you could get those mics as close as you can uh, stand it uh, to your mouth uh, so we can uh, hear, you, uh, hear you well. And, uh, Kerry, uh, you can begin. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I'm running for school board for District 428. Uh, I've been working with the school board and the Financial Facility Advisory Committee for many years now. And uh, recently, uh, the school board members, some of them asked me to run, and I'm going ahead and doing that. Uh, I'm from Malta. I have a farmette. Uh, I have a wife. I have four children. They're all grown now. Three of them were in the Malta schools first, and then when it merged, the DeKalb schools. Uh, my youngest is, is now out of college and working, uh, as the other three are. Uh, I'm interested in seeing the school district uh, improve. Uh, it's been doing very well. We have a good board right now, uh, but there are great issues uh, ahead of us, uh, particularly the finances. We're running a deficit budget, and uh, that's something that I would like to tackle and see if we can get that back to a balanced budget. Uh, there's another uh, number of issues that are very significant. I suppose we'll talk about some of those today. So I'm Kerry Malott, running for school board. I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. That's Kerry Malott. And now in uh, opening statement from Rick Smith. Good evening, Rick. Good evening, Scott. Um, my name is Rick Smith. I uh, have three uh, kids in the, in the DeKalb School District. Uh, married, live in DeKalb uh, for 17 years. Um, and uh, so really I look at this opportunity to be a part of the school board as a time to contribute back uh, to the school system. Um, I have uh, uh, see a, a, great, a great opportunity um, to, to help the current school board members uh, make sound decisions. Um, certainly, as Kerry mentioned, there's a there's several issues that uh, that we'll be faced with. Um, obviously, the finances uh, being one of them, but there's other uh, issues. And when I say issues, I really I mean there are opportunities. Really, I mean because uh, like with the with the new one to one program, I mean it's an exciting time. Uh, and so, so I really look to uh, be able to put uh, my time and services to helping the the other members of the school board make the best possible de decisions for, for our students. 
All right, and that's uh, Rick Smith. We'll now move on to questions, up to uh, one minute for each response. Uh, we'll begin uh, with Rick for this question. Uh, we're going to keep uh, most of the questions the uh, same uh, to uh, make the uh, two segments as fair as possible. Uh, so we'll begin with uh, this question. Uh, the DeKalb School Board at their last meeting approved a three-year plan to provide uh, every student in the district with a uh, computer for use at school and home. Do you support the one-to-one -one plan, and should any changes be made to the rollout? I absolutely support the one-to-one -one plan. You know, um, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a eighth grader uh, that uh, was part of the pilot program uh, for the rollout. And I'll tell you, it's been a tremendous opportunity for him to uh, um, um, have a Chromebook um, and be responsible. Uh, there's been really no issues with... Uh, with him, uh, you know, getting on the internet at home and accessing the programs. Uh, uh, so for, from that standpoint, it's been great. But, you know, the opportunity to constantly be able to research uh, the, with the internet and to dialogue with their peers in and out of the classroom is, is outstanding. And it's really not only the way of, uh, of, of how we have to do things now, but going forward, there'll be advancements made. So it's an excellent platform. That's Rick Smith. Now a response from Kerry Malott. We've been uh, following the one-to-one -one plan on the Finance Facility Advisory Committee for quite some time now, and it is a great plan. Uh, we have testimony from a number of teachers, and, and certainly the, the thing I like to hear is from the kids themselves. They've been having a really good time with this. As Rick mentioned, uh, there is a pilot program. It was all the eighth grade and all of Lincoln School. Uh, that worked out very well. Uh, there's other problems with the plan, and that's particularly due to the, the cost of the plan. It's very expensive. Uh, the plan has been chosen to be three years of rollout over that period of time, uh, and there are going to be issues financially. We may well have to change some of the uh, implementation of that program due to cost constraints, but we are going with it, and it looks like to, uh, a good plan for the district. That's uh, Kerry Malott. This is a WLBK Candidates Forum. Uh, right now we're hearing uh, from uh, candidates for DeKalb School Board. We began with the uh, three candidates, and we have uh, two more candidates uh, right now. Move on to uh, another question. This one will begin with uh, Kerry. Uh, do you support pursuing the creation of a 1% sales tax for school facilities or a property tax or referendum to help eliminate uh, budget deficits? I'd much rather see no taxes, no new taxes. Uh, and if we do go with the 1% tax, which, by the way, would be by a referendum, so the, the people would have to choose this tax, uh, I would m want to see a reduction in the property tax by an equal amount. Uh, I think that we can't keep spending, spending, spending. We're going to have to, in this time at least, find some ways to cut. What we really need to do is broaden our base. Uh, and that's one good reason not to increase property taxes. Property taxes in the DeKalb area are already so high, some of the highest in the nation, in fact. Uh, that we are keeping people from coming here and opening small businesses, keeping people from coming here and, and spending money in this area rather than some other area because our tax is so high. So uh, the 1% tax is a possibility. I'm, I'm willing to discuss it, uh, and I would be much more willing to discuss it if there were a one-to-one -one reduction in the property taxes so that we can expand the base, which is what ultimately we must do for 428 and the DeKalb County area. That's uh, Kerry Malott. Now a response from Rick Smith. Um, as Kerry said, it, it is uh, uh, all options have to be on the table, and certainly um, no one likes to increase taxes. Um, and, and so, whether it's a property tax or a sales tax, it's not going to be fun to uh, to, to you know, propose that question and have that referendum. But uh, you know, this the uh, the community will be able to have a voice in that, and hopefully, that's not the first option. You know, hopefully as we get a chance to kind of delve into, take a deeper dive into the budget and see where the expenses are, there'll be other options for us. And uh, so, again, I mean, uh, you know, getting dialogue from the teachers, uh, you know, the administration, the community on what's, what's our next, you know, what are our options? What's our next best choice? Um, certainly that we can, again, I look forward to helping the school board members make a sound uh, de decision in that, in that regard. And that's uh, Rick Smith. Uh, final question, and uh, for this one, we'll begin with uh, Rick. Uh, should parents be allowed to uh, opt their child out of the park assessment? And again, we'll begin with Rick Smith. Well, uh, the park assessment, as it is, is uh, uh, sort of a, a check and balance on the Common Core tests. Um, and certainly, um, I'll say this, that uh, the, the Common Core is a state 
is a state program. Uh, it's not a federal program as uh, some people might think it is. And so uh, the state of Illinois has thrown its support behind Common Core and behind park testing. And I think before we opt out of anything, we ought to give it a chance. It's a fairly new program. Uh, I think that it has some, some validity. It has some benefits. Certainly, like with other large programs, anytime you try and roll something like that out, there's always issues that you have to tweak and address. Now, I'd prefer to, instead of be given the option to opt out completely, let's look at some things that may have, offer some choices as to maybe do things differently the second year. That's a response from Rick Smith. Now a response from Kerry Malott. Well, the park assessment is new this year. Uh, it is part of Common Core, as Rick said. And the most significant part of it is that it's, uh, you, you must do this on a computer. This is not a, a paper test. Uh, and there are many, many districts across the uh, state uh, that just don't have the money or the facilities uh, to accommodate this. I don't know what's going to happen. It will be very interesting to see at, at the end of the school year what actually has happened and what sort of data there is. Uh, we, we need to do things on the basis of factual information or data. Uh, the intent of, of the park assessment, Common Core, is good, but the implementation is not so good. It's too soon, too quick, and there's another, it's just another unfunded mandate. Uh, but we'll have to see uh, at the end of the, of the year uh, what we actually come up with from park. Uh, in 428, we're fortunate that uh, we're able to do this. Uh, but just barely. Uh, so whether or not to opt out, I, I wouldn't be willing to say just yet. I think let's look at the data at, at the end of this year and then decide that. That's Kerry a lot. Uh, now we move to uh, closing statements. Since uh, Kerry gave the uh, first opening, we'll let uh, Rick Smith give our first closing statement. Well, uh, first of all, thanks, Scott, for the opportunity to come and, and talk about uh, why I want to be a part of the school board. Uh, again, I, I certainly look at um, uh, my offering uh, the, the services that I have as a as an opportunity to serve the community. Uh, I'm I've been fortunate enough to uh, be blessed with three kids who are doing very well in this in the school district, and um, I, I have uh, numerous friends that are teachers and and uh, and so I'm familiar with that standpoint. These all these people uh, do a fantastic job, and so there's a need. Uh, there's definitely a need to make. Uh, good sound decisions and uh, I really would appreciate your vote as a write-in candidate vote for Rick Smith write in Rick Smith uh, for school board on April 7th I would appreciate it thank you that's Rick Smith now a closing statement for uh, from Kerry Malott well, thank you Scott for uh, the opportunity to be here in WLBK and uh, Scott you're the one guy I can say is always <laughs> there at the school board meetings uh, I've been to just about every one of them and I always see you there so thank you for your attendance and your reporting from that uh, I'm looking forward to this next year and, and thereafter on the school board uh, there's a lot to do I've been working with them I'd like to continue uh, there's so much to decide I'm an analytical sort of a guy I like to look at these kinds of situations and problems and try and bring resolution to them uh, I think there's uh, a lot of promise and hope. We have a great board right now. We have a good superintendent and an awful lot of good teachers across the district. Uh, there are many, many resources to work with in District 428. So I'm looking forward to continuing to do that as a board member. Uh, I would appreciate your vote and I would appreciate your participation, all you folks out there in Radio Land and across the DeKalb County area in District 428. Uh, your tax dollars need to be hard at work in 428 and I hope I can make that happen. Thank you very much. That's Kerry Malott. We've now heard from uh, five candidates for DeKalb School Board. For informational purposes, I'll note there are two more candidates uh, who did not uh, participate uh, tonight. Uh, coming up next, we'll uh, move on to DeKalb City Council races when the candidates forum continues. <laughs> As the uh, forum continues, we now move on to DeKalb City Council races. There are four council seats up for election. There are contested races for three of those seats. And we begin with the third ward race. Covers uh, the east side of the city, north of the railroad tracks. And the candidates are Steve Capitan and Michael Marquardt. Our uh, format is as follows, same as uh, with the school board races. Uh, one, an uh, opening statement for up to two minutes from each candidate. Uh, questions with response of up to a minute each, and then closing statements uh, for up to a minute each for uh, each candidate. Uh, Dalton Bates uh, will keep time and will hold up signs telling candidates when they have 30 seconds left, 10 seconds, and then when to stop. We begin with uh, opening statements. 
Michael Mor uh, Marquardt, uh, will give our first uh, opening statement. Good evening, Michael. Good evening, and thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, my name is Michael Marquardt, and I have been a resident of DeKalb since 1989. I moved into the third ward in December of 1993. I uh, have worked as a office manager for the last 16 years uh, at uh, companies in DeKalb and dealing with accounting, human resources, computers, uh, insurance. So uh, I'm running for office in order to utilize my skills uh, to make DeKalb even a better place to live. I believe that I bring those skills of accounting to help with our budget issues going forward, uh, many of which uh, our listeners know about. Um, and I, I believe that we need to work to achieve a consensus uh, with the board and with the community, keeping our ears open to what they want uh, so that we do serve them uh, and provide them with the best possible services that they expect. Thanks. That's Michael Marquardt. Uh, next, an opening statement from Steve Capitan. Steve? Uh, good evening. Thank you for having this forum. Um, my name is Steve Capitan. I've lived in the third ward for 32 of the 35 years that I've been in DeKalb. I served on the city council from 1995 to 2007 and as city clerk from 2009 to 2012. I uh, received a Bachelor of Science degree in economics from NIU and am currently employed as the scan coordinator at Jewel Foods. I have been an active volunteer in the community, uh, community or a number of community organizations over many years. I first got involved with city government by opposing the use of taxpayer dollars to tear down an historic building in, in order to bring in an, a drugstore. My approach to city government and to economic development is to favor funding the basic city services and invest in infrastructure in order to have a desirable place to live, raise a family, build a business. While I'm not opposed to all financial incentives to lure new businesses here, I believe that our community must be attractive, an attractive place for someone to want to invest and to live here. DeKalb's a wonderful community and has a lot going for it. The city should more aggressively promote that and our educated workforce and the presence of high-speed fiber optic cable when recruiting businesses. Improving the city's website should not be rushed. If it, it is too important uh, as our front door and the first impression to someone considering investing and living here. Also, the city's uh, geographic information system could generate greater efficiencies if it was better integrated into the citywide operations. Finally, um, tax increment financing, in my opinion, should be are, are better used for revitalizing blighted areas than for direct uh, business subsidies. That's Steve Capitan. We now move on to questions, uh, responses of up to uh, one minute uh, piece. And uh, we'll start uh, with uh, Steve Capitan. Question uh, one, Third Ward covers the uh, Pleasant Street manufacturing area. The condemned portions of the uh, Wurlitzer plant have been torn down, but the GE plant now stands vacant. What should be done to redevelop this area? And again, we'll begin with Steve Capitan. Well, it's a reflection of the evolving economy in the entire country. Um, but one of the... Uh, the positive aspects of that is is that the fiber optic cable is runs uh, very near that um, industrial park and I think that in looking at uh, using TIF funds to try and link that up with a potential and attract a potential business into that industrial park I think is one step that could be taken um, this is the this would be an appropriate use of TIF funds rather than just a direct uh, giveaway subsidy. That's a Steve Capitan. Next response from Michael Marquardt. We do have an opportunity over there to um, bring in some new businesses, and I believe we need to work with uh, other area organizations such as the DeKalb Chamber, uh, DeKalb County Economic Development Corporation to get our word out so that we can attract area businesses to this area. Um, TIF funds would be wonderful and, and 
properly used there to bring in those companies. We need to ultimately work to put our name out and promote what we do have to offer here. Uh, our closeness to the interstate, um, to the rail yards, and uh, use that fiber optic possibility to also bring in those companies. That's uh, Michael Marquardt. Uh, next question, uh, we will begin with uh, Michael. A portion of the downtown is in the third war. It's been a few years now since the downtown revitalization projects were completed. Uh, what more, if anything, uh, should the city do to improve the downtown? And again, we'll begin with Michael Marquardt. I love the downtown uh, area and being in the third ward uh, where we live, it's it's a wonderful that we're able to walk down there to take advantage of uh, the area restaurants and other businesses in that area. And uh, most most what we need to do is to continue to promote that area, uh, work with the landlords uh, to bring in uh, companies uh, that will expand. Uh, and expand their businesses in those areas and work to retain the companies that we have there uh, by not increasing our fees, our various taxes. And I think that we can also promote it to um, NIU students. Uh, I don't know how many of them are quite aware of that area as far as spending their uh, spendable dollars. Um, and further just make it more wonderful. That's Michael Marquardt. Uh, next response from Steve Capitan. The city has spent uh, many millions of dollars in um, investing in infrastructure in the downtown to uh, improve the physical appearance of the downtown. Um, I think that the uh, uh, downtown community needs to pull together to market itself and to promote itself as a destination and identify businesses that they would like to attract to complement the mix of businesses that are currently there. I think that's the most important thing that needs to happen at this point. Um, I think also that the city, from the city standpoint, the city should also promote residential development in and around the downtown area because as residential development is is uh, present in the downtown area that will create um, active uh, a vibrant downtown which will uh, generate more business activity. That's Steve Capitan. This is the WBK Candidates Forum. We're delving into the uh, third ward uh, city council race. Uh, in the middle of our uh, questions here, uh, this one will begin with uh, Steve Capitan. Uh, DeKalb stands to lose over uh, $2 million if the uh, governor's plan to reduce the amount of income tax revenue shared with municipalities happens. To prepare for the worst, let's assume it's approved. Uh, what ideas do you have for additional revenue or spending cuts uh, to make up for that lost revenue? And again, we'll begin with Steve Capitan. Well, the first thing we need to do, uh, and that would be the budget uh, that we would face, uh, uh, has to be passed by July 1st, would be to look at what um, spending cuts we could make. I think that certainly if a salary freeze on management salaries, uh, postponement of vehicle purchases, and perhaps delays in um, infrastructure projects um, that are on the uh, drawing board. As far as any additional revenues, I would oppose any increase in property taxes. While the city's share of property taxes is relatively small, the school district takes the lion's share. Um, the overall tax burden, property tax burden, is too high for the city to consider raising that. I would uh, have to look at what uh, our options were and consider uh, possibly other revenue sources. But uh, spending cuts are the first priority. That's uh, Steve Capitan. Now a response from Michael Marquardt. I think that we need to take a look at how our uh, city is run take a uh, look at all the departments and see where there are cost savings to be had to see where um, we can run more efficiently that way. Uh, a salary freeze for employees is not a bad idea to keep that uh, in check to begin with. 
I don't believe that we are going to be able to make up the difference through property taxes. It's just not feasible for anybody. Um, so initially we need to look at this budget um, at where we can cut, um, take a look at where we have future spending in place and, and do away with what's not absolutely necessary. Um, we need to focus on our core services first, make sure those are uh, covered, and then go from there as far as the additional quality of life aspects. That's Michael Marquardt. And we'll now move to closing statements. Again, uh, up to uh, one minute each. Uh, since uh, Michael gave our uh, opening statement uh, first, we'll let uh, Steve Capitan give the first closing statement. Steve? The uh, first order of business for the new city council after the election will be working with the staff and the finance advisory committee to put together a balanced budget by July 1st. We're facing some tough choices with Governor Rauner's proposed budget, cutting the city's uh, share of the state income tax in half, costing, it, uh, costing the city over $2 million, and his proposal to cut NIU's funding by 30% uh, will have a, a, a will hurt the local economy and reduce city revenue even further. I hope that you would uh, entrust me with your support and uh, that I have the uh, uh, analytical ability and the interest of the, the best interest of the community in general. And I ask uh, for your vote on April 7th. That is Steve Capitan. Now a closing statement from Michael Marquardt. Thank you. Um, I come into running for this office without any prior political aspirations or political experience. I uh, would like to bring in a fresh viewpoint uh, to running the city, to working with uh, staff and working with uh, the city organizations that have a say in how this city uh, should be run. I believe that I bring a skill set that plays well uh, in this position to take a look at all the diverse um, questions that are before us and to work to pick the right ones for us. Uh, I, so I ask for your, your vote on April 7th. I believe that we can make a DeKalb even better place to live, to raise our kids and uh, create a better future. Thank that, you. That is Michael Marquardt. Gentlemen, thank you so much for participating tonight. Again, those are your candidates for DeKalb City Council Ward 3. Uh, coming up next, we'll have the candidates uh, in Ward 5 when the candidates' night continues. We now move on to our next contested DeKalb City Council race. It's Ward 5 in the heart of the city. Candidates are Michael Hajishi, Kate Noriko, and Cameron, uh, Cameron Zelaya. All right, our format, if you're just joining us, uh, opening statements for up to two minutes from each candidate, questions with responses of up to uh, one minute each, and closing statements uh, for up to a minute for each candidate. Uh, Dalton Bates is keeping time and will hold up signs telling our candidates when they have 30 seconds left, 10 seconds left, and when to stop. Begin with the opening statements. Uh, we'll begin with Michael Hajishi. Michael? My name is Michael Hajishik. I'm a professor of electrical engineering at NIU, and I would like to be your Ward 5 or 5th Ward Alderman. Um, I came to the Calb 13 years ago to teach from a corporate job. I spent 10 years at Honeywell, and prior to that, I was a student, and prior to that, I worked at Bell Helicopter Textron, where I worked on the V-22 Osprey. Um, I would like to um, talk to you a little bit about what we want to do in the Cal. I would like to freeze taxes at the property level. That's about 12% of your property taxes. It's not a huge amount, but it's something, a statement saying that we want to move forward. I want to improve the fiber optic infrastructure. I want to make a place where our kids can have jobs, where we can attract kids from other cities. We can make this place something different than it's been. Right now, everybody is telling us, well, we can only build uh, retail, get a little bit of sales tax. We can only do a little, we can go out and build a parking garage. Maybe we can bring some students to wander back and forth from downtown to the middle of the university. Maybe that'll make us some money. No, we need to turn this town into something else. We need to bring something to this town that will bring 
people who have money, who want to build businesses, and who want to build a future in DeKalb. I do not want to see any more money put into endless developments of endless shopping centers over and over and over till the I can't see anything else. So I would like to be your fifth ward, Alderman. Thank you. That's Michael Hajishik next in opening statement from Cameron Zelaya. Cameron? Thank you very much, Scott, and good evening, WLBK listeners. Uh, and thank you, WLBK, for hosting and broadcasting this candidate's forum. Since this is the third forum, I wanted to take this opportunity to modify my normal intro and dig a little deeper into who I am and what I would bring to the position of Alderman of the Fifth Ward. So as has been stated, I'm Cameron Zelaya, and I'm running for Alderman of Fifth Ward. I was recently asked uh, how I have been involved in our city, and to this I responded that I have been in, for the past 14 years, I have been a member of the First Congregational United Church of Christ. And through my church community, I've had numerous opportunities to get involved with the wider community, such as assisting in preparing and delivering meals to Hope Haven, donating Christmas gifts to foster children in our area, and singing in the church choir. I'm actually supposed to be in choir practice right now, so my apologies to our choir director. Uh, I have a background in research and critical thinking. These are the skills I earned at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, as well as a degree in sociology. After graduating, I spent a year living in Washington, D.C. Serving as a legislative intern in the Senate and in the House of Representatives strengthened these skills but it also taught me a great deal of dedication. People don't always realize, but interns aren't paid. Uh, so to support myself, I had to take on a second job, working 35 hours a week, earning $8 an hour out of Fuddruckers. There were days when I went straight from the Capitol building and to Fuddruckers, but it was worth it to live out a dream. After a year, I found myself missing my family and friends back here in DeKalb, so I decided to return and began serving DeKalb County as an in-person counselor. In this position, I work to connect people throughout the county with affordable health coverage. I have worked to ensure that my hours are set by the needs of those I serve. I have worked late, I have worked weekends, and I've even worked normal business hours to meet the schedules of the people I'm serving. These are the skills, and this is the mindset that I would bring to the position of Alderman of the Fifth Ward. I am a great choice for Alderman, and I hope to have your support on April 7th. Thank you. That is Cameron Zelaya. Next, an opening statement from Kate Nariko. Kate? Good evening. Thank you to LBK for this opportunity. I am Kate Nariko, and I am running for Alderman in the Fifth Ward because I want to contribute my knowledge and skills from professional experience and community involvement to improving economic opportunities and the quality of life in DeKalb. I spent over 25 years as a human resources professional and director. I negotiated with employees and managers and developed consensus solutions. I carefully researched complex issues and decided on solid courses of action. I have also been actively involved in the city's community efforts including the leadership of the DeKalb Chamber of Commerce and Kishwaukee United Way. I continue to serve on the 4C Board of Directors. These activities have enabled me to understand concerns of DeKalb's businesses and its residents. In the upcoming year in the future, the city of DeKalb must address problems. Shaky finances, loss of jobs, aging infrastructure. I have talked with people throughout the community and will continue warden city residents and business owners, city department heads and staff and elected officials, and I use staff. I know that the energy, creativity, and will exist within the community to enable us to move forward on sustainable solutions. We must draw on the city's many resources, a strong dedicated workforce, a rich farming and agribusiness history, the resources of NIU, an up-to-date hospital and healthcare system, efficient and beautiful new library and police station. I could continue, but I know that you are aware of the reasons DeKalb is home for you. Together, we must encourage and support a full range of businesses. I will want to work with you on those opportunities. Thank you for your support with your vote on April 7th. That's Kate Garico. We now move on to our questions. We'll begin with Cameron Zelaya. South 4th Street is one of the borders of the 5th Ward. The Bertano Salvage Yard was recently purchased as a first step to cleaning that up uh, and then uh, revitalizing uh, the entire South 4th uh, Street uh, city corridor. What should be the uh, next uh, step for improving South 4th Street? Again, we'll begin with Cameron Zelaya. 
So to begin, of course, we have to make sure that we're working with the EPA and make sure we get that potato site cleaned accordingly, which could take a little bit of time. In the meantime, we should be looking for ideas on what we would like to put there, seeking a uh, response from the residents in the, in the area. That particular area that you cited is heavily residential. Um, so what would be good for the residents who live in that area? What would they like to see? Let's reach out. Let's hear some people. Would they like something, uh, an additional shopping opportunities? Would they like a manufacturing plant right there? Probably not, but let's ask the people. Let's see what they think. Thank you. That's Cameron Zelaya. Now a response from Kate Noriko. Kate. I have an interest in that area, um, both as um, the potential alderman and also a resident. I live on Barb, and I know that the residents have been concerned about development, feeling forgotten in that area. I agree with Cameron that the residents' needs um, must be considered, and we also need to recognize that there are two schools in that location, and that necessarily impacts and affects the type of businesses that would be reasonable for that area. Also, um, the uh, what the street is like, what 4th Street currently is like, the infrastructure, that would have to be addressed as well. Um, I know that um, ideas with the Park District have uh, gone forward, and I think they should be brought into the discussions as well. Thank you. That's Kate Noriko. Now a response from Michael Hajishik. The 4th Street corridor was... Um an interesting problem. When we, when Portano's was, went out, essentially business, we found out it was contaminated with lead and other cadmium and some of these other toxic materials. Um, the county has property. The city's going to buy it for the taxes. The EPA is going to supply money for the cleanup, and the city's going to s- supply an in-kind work. In other words, machinery the uh, and manpower. Um, what we're going to do with it is going to depend on how much is left of whatever they end up cleaning up. Um, the other thing that was proposed at one point was to turn that into a, a boulevard with bike trails and the whole bit on either side. That was an early proposal, never came through. Um, then some businesses along there, I mean, I, I, I think it would be a nice place to do a little bit of development, other restaurant maybe or something that uh, supplies services to the people there. That's Michael Haji Sheik. All right, uh, we move on to our uh, second question, and for this one we'll begin with Kate. Before it also includes the Elwood neighborhood and the uh, John Street neighborhood, and both of those areas are addressed in the DeKalb City Center plan and NIU's Bold Ideas plan. Do you support the ideas in those plans? Kate? I know that the ideas, particularly that NIU put forward, have caused a great deal of controversy and concern in the Elwood House Historic District area. And I understand those concerns. That is a very special area. It has historic significance. Many of the homes are beautiful, beautifully maintained. And I think that NIU really got ahead of itself in putting forward ideas that perhaps sounded more definite than they actually were. Um, I'd like to get beyond that initial difficult start and talk with NIU, sit down on a reasonable basis, take a look at particularly the John Street area. Um, One needs to be careful with that because it is uh, close to other residences, but what can be done? Thank you. That is Kate Noriko, and now a response from Michael Hajishik. That neighborhood was designed by one of the premier landscape architects, including John Street and Harrison Street and Locust Street. The man was named Swain Nelson. He he designed um, Lincoln Park and Graceland Cemetery also. So many DeKalbites, or DeKalbians, or whatever, uh, as Cameron likes to say, um, they don't really know this. The city didn't even know this. The university plans were based on city plans. The city had the plans. They gave it to the university. DeKalb 2020 was a plan developed by the city, not and the 
Foundation. And so these discussions have been going on since 2012. These are not just recent, and they're not getting ahead necessarily, but they were starting to look at purchasing properties. And I think basically we should reset. The university should do the university thing. My employer and the people living there and the landowners should do their thing. Thank you. That is Michael Hajishik. Now response from Cameron Zelaya. Thank you very much. The city center plan is heavily focused on downtown DeKalb, what we can do to generate traffic, ideas to improve downtown DeKalb, and I agree with a lot of those good ideas. You know, one thing that it proposes and would like, I would like to see, and I have, it's an idea I've expressed, it would be to fill up that um, particular development prop, that property that's in the Fifth Ward between Pearl Street and First Street. I drive by that little empty vacant lot that's lined with blighted houses every day, and it's quite concerning to me because Lincoln Highway is a very heavily trafficked uh, highway and it presents an image of DeKalb, which I don't think is appropriate for those of us who have such great pride in our city. So I'd like to see us, and my idea has been to return to one of the original ideas for that property, which was mixed retail and residential property, and see if we can spur additional businesses to come in there, get people living there, higher end uh, rental properties potentially, uh, and discuss what other ideas people might have. And then specifically to some of the points that were in the city center plan regarding the Elwood historical area, there are some interesting ideas, but I'd like to discuss that more with the residents. Thank you. That's Cameron Zelaya. Let's uh, go on to a, uh, another question. This time we'll begin with uh, Michael Hajishik. Uh, before the uh, city now is request for a $650,000 forgivable loan by a car dealership, it needs to make uh, over $2 million in corporate mandated improvements uh, to that dealership. Uh, that's an example of a, uh, a tax incentive or a retention incentive. Uh, when would you support uh, tax breaks or forgivable loans for uh, business attraction and retention? I am generally against those type of loans unless there is an overriding need, okay? In case that in this, there's a minimum threshold that needs to be done for a particular business to be able to pro, to be able to prosper, and something that was good for the city. The case of the Bemis deal is another deal very similar. to The one was asked by Manning, Brad Manning Ford. They asked for 110 thousand. The city balked. They said, "Okay, we'll do it ourselves." Um, Bemis should do the same thing. City balked. He should say, "I'll do it myself." Okay. Because he's got $12 million, maybe $15 million to move that business. $650,000 isn't enough to break his bank. That's Michael Hajishik. Now a response from Cameron Zelaya. So specifically regarding the request from Brian Bemis, um, they haven't yet, their request hasn't exactly been in line with the city's current guidelines for assistance, uh, that being 20% of the expenditures, total expenditures, and as well as demonstrating that gap in funding. So I would like to make sure that if they're requesting that, that they first fall in line with the requirements set by the city before receiving any funds. Um, and to the wider question, though, of where would I see um, certain incentives providing that to businesses so that they relocate here, I would be open to that. Again, it would have to be dependent on the need. Uh, how much uh, revenue are they going to bring in? What are they going to offer uh, to us as a city, uh, to the residents of the ward? What are they offering? And if it's justified, I would be okay with it. If not, I'd say no. Thank you. That's Cameron Zelaya. Now a response from Kate Narico. Specifically regarding the Bemis request, I agree with the sentiment that was expressed at the city council meeting. Not enough information. We don't have enough information regarding what Toyota was requiring of Bemis. We don't have enough information about the gap between their financing and the dollars required. In general, I think that any business coming forward with such a request must be prepared to provide documentation and must meet the current guidelines. Any request needs to be mutually beneficial, not only for the business, but also for the city in terms of jobs created, revenue, etc. Thank you.
That's Kate Nariko. Now move to our uh, closing uh, statements. Again, you're uh, listening to the WLBK Candidates Forum. We're hearing for the candidates from uh, for the uh, fifth ward seat. And uh, we'll begin uh, closing statements with Cameron Zelaya. Cameron. Thank you very much for having us tonight, Scott. And thank you for all the WLBK listeners out there tuning in tonight. My name is Cameron Zelaya, running for the alderman, position of alderman of the fifth ward. I've lived in this town for practically my entire life. Uh, it's a great town. And as I've heard from so many of the residents in the 5th Ward, it's a really small, nice town. Uh, There are a couple of things we can do to actively make it a more attractive community to those uh, who might seek to reside here. Uh, One of the things I've mentioned repeatedly is, as has been noted in the Daily Chronicle, is filling that that development property between 1st and Pearl Street to see if we can't spur on additional higher-end rental properties or condominiums. I'm open to discussion, of course. And see if we can't generate additional... Uh, foot traffic down to downtown DeKalb. These are things I would like to work on to ensure that we have a vibrant community, to make sure we have more people out and present in the community. Um, I know down at the U of I, whenever I go down there, I see people out there engaging, and I want to engage as well. I want to make sure we have that sentiment right here in DeKalb. Thank you. That's Cameron Zelaya. Now a closing statement from Kate Narico. Thank you. Again, I appreciated this opportunity for us to again explore issues, concerns facing the city, the Ward 5, facing us. We're all residents also. Um, I know that uh, we do have the energy and creativity to address those problems. Will Heinisch recently sent me the link for a 1967 video on DeKalb titled Our Town. I was struck by the city's positive energy expressed in that video. I want to recapture that energy with you. I want to work with you on addressing the city's issues. Thank you, and I would appreciate your support with your vote on April 7th. That's Kate Nariko. Now a closing statement from Michael Hashishi. As I used to tell my soccer kids when I was coaching AYSO, um, we're in the team. We all have to work together. The city needs to work together, but we also need to understand that the ward and the ward alderman versus the alderman representative of the people in the ward, and then from there works with the rest of the city. And I want to work in the community involvement, community, community development with my ward, and I would like to be your alderman. Please vote me for me. Thank you. That's Michael Hajishik. Those are your candidates for DeKalb City Council Ward 5. Thank you all so much for participating tonight. And uh, we now turn to our final contested race for DeKalb City Council. Also our final segment uh, of our uh, show tonight. Uh, this is Award 7 covering the uh, far west part of DeKalb. Cumbed Monica O'Leary is seeking re-election and is being challenged by Craig Roman. Our format, if you're just joining us, uh, opening statements for up to two minutes from each candidate. And questions with responses of up to one minute each. And then uh, closing statements for up to a minute uh, for each candidate. Dalton Bates is keeping time and will hold up signs telling the candidates when they have 30 seconds left, 10 seconds, and when to stop. We begin with uh, opening statements, and we begin with Craig Roman. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I'd like to thank WLBK and Scott for the opportunity to be on the radio and to address you today. I am Craig Roman, and I'm running for Alderman of the 7th Ward. You may recall my experience includes that I have been the regional director for CFL pre-need insurance for 10 years, a licensed funeral director in Balmer for 19 years, working with two local funeral homes, and I was the treasurer for a local organization for the past two and a half years. With those qualities, I am excited about the prospect of bringing them with transparency and communication to the residents. I believe that we need a more transparent and open government. I believe that your alderman should be your representative and that an alderman is the voice of the people. How can they truly represent you when they don't talk to you? They don't inform you. I would have quarterly meetings in local establishments opening the dialogue between you and me. I promise that I would begin these meetings even before I'm sworn into office. If I am elected, I will hold a meet and greet so we can all get to know each other and start off on the right foot. These are the items I see that we are missing from our alderman and our ward. Yes. 
There are other pressing items that we will need to focus on, but if you'd like to know how I stand on other issues, please check out the questions I have answered for the Daily Chronicles website, uh, DeKalb County Online, and soon in the Northern Star. Thank you. That's Craig Roman. Now an opening statement from Monica O'Leary. Thank you so much, uh, WLBK, for having me here tonight. My name is Monica O'Leary. I have been a resident of DeKalb for 31 years. I am a wife, a mother, I'm a minister, I'm a business owner, and I love DeKalb. I currently sit on the board of the uh, co uh, Community Service Block Grant uh, member, and um, I'm a director of the Christian Education at our church. One of my key things is uh, crime and safety, also budget management and um, economic development through small businesses. And one more thing, no more taxes. Thank you. That's Monica O'Leary. Now move to our uh, questions. Uh, we'll begin with uh, Monica O'Leary. Uh, strides have been made to uh, reduce uh, crime in the northwest part of DeKalb. What more should be done? Um, well, you know, right now, um, NIU and DeKalb Police are working together. They're collaborating on keeping the area safe. We have um, uh, patrol officers, bikes, uh, dogs, uh, all kinds of things just to keep it safe. What more could be done? I think we just, if we had more um, people walking when the weather is nice around the neighborhoods, because I think more things happen when it's dark. So during the day, you'll see them, but at night, you may not see as many as police officers as we like. That's Monica O'Leary. Now a response from Craig Roman. I believe that the police department was going with community policing and I believe having residents in the neighborhoods that are police officers that are walking, that are living, um, and then just having an active neighborhood that if if we get out and we get to know our neighbors, um, I believe we would have a more peaceful and happy town. Thank you. That's Craig Roman. We'll move on to our uh, next question. Uh, the seventh ward includes a part of the university. There's more need to be done to improve the relationship between the city and university. And this time we'll begin with Craig Roman. With the university, we have an intertwined relationship between the city of DeKalb and NIU that we provide them services that um, help them operate. Um, but the we have to work together that um, we have to keep the, the students safe. We have to let them know that we want them to stay here and uh, maintain residence here and to know that DeKalb can be their home. Um, just as we have chosen it to be. That's Craig Roman. Now a response from Monica O'Leary. Thank you. Um, well, right now, we are working together with the university, um, the Cal Police and the university. I mean, we're working together, not just the police, the fire, the whole community. We come together. We have community meetings. We are talking. And so it's been a... Um, uh, for Sana for so long that the city is against the university and really we have been coming together and so because we're taking the small steps um, we can't keep looking at oh what happened in the past because right now we are moving forward together we're uh, having a roll calls together we are working together that's Monica O'Leary thank you Another question. Uh, we'll begin with uh, Monica O'Leary this time. Uh, the budget for next f uh, fiscal year hasn't been presented yet, uh, but there will likely be a gap between uh, revenue and expenses, uh, which uh, could be made worse by a $2 million reduction uh, if state funding to municipalities is reduced. What ideas do you have for additional uh, revenue or spending cuts? Well, um, spending cuts, uh, since the budget has not been presented and the idea that we may lose $2 million is a, is a big thing. And so we may have to look at cutting um, back in salaries, um, fleet. I mean, we just got new vehicles all around, so we can cut that line items because we just get new ones. Um, we also can look at um, how we can combine things. I was thinking about how we order a lot of things, the university and us, how we can combine the things that we need and, and save money that way as a whole. That's Monica O'Leary. Now a response from Craig Roman. The ideal thing I would love to see is that we bring in more business here to generate more tax revenue for the city. Um, we would have to work on that. The other thing that we'd have to look at would be senior staff. Um, is Should we um, freeze the pay for the staff? Should we look at 
um, reductions throughout the departments and I would talk to the department heads and have them come back with at least a 10% reduction if we are facing the $2 million um, cut. And then um, we would just be trying to be more proactive, trying to get more people here and not have the, um, the loss of businesses that we have suffered lately. That's uh, Craig Roman. Uh, final uh, question. Uh, we haven't asked uh, yet anybody about transparency. Is there anything uh, that can be done to improve uh, transparency in the city uh, of uh, DeKalb? And or are you satisfied uh, with the current level? And we'll begin with uh, Craig Roman. I guess since that's almost my keyword, um, I want to get back into the residents, uh, get with the residents and explain to them what is going on with the city. That is, that is my idea of transparency. I don't expect people to be paying attention to city government to, with their daily lives. I just ask they, they give me a, a Saturday every quarter that we can come to them, explain what is going on, and then if there is anything pressing in the city that we have open lines of communication, that if we can do emails or if we can do um, uh, phone calls, just to get the community involved, and I believe that would just add to our transparency. Uh, anything that I can bring from the city council to the residents, you can guarantee that I will. That is Craig Roman, uh, and uh, now response from Monica O'Leary. Um, yes, I believe that we can be more transparent. Um, I'm thinking of a situation with the web page and how we were not fully informed on all the ones who had bid it on the uh, for that position, and we didn't find out until after the fact. So we need to be more transparent. I believe that uh, as the city, they should inform uh, the council member of everything that come in, not just things they want to pick and choose. I think we should be informed on everything that come in so we can make a right decision for the community the staff yes they 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 work for the city but we are supporting the people of the city so i think transparency may let us see everything don't hold anything back thank you that is monica o'leary uh, and we now move to uh closing statements since uh, craig gave the first uh, opening statement we'll have uh, monica o'leary give the first closing statement Again, my name is Monica O'Leary, and I'm running for re-election for Alderman of the 7th Ward. I have been here 31 years. I, I love DeKalb. I always felt like DeKalb was a place where we can come, and if you wasn't on your feet, you can stand on your feet. Even as I have been here, I've been through different transitions from um, being homeless to moving, uh, living in homeless shelters for two months, uh, living in the University Village, and to buying a home to open a business. I believe that this DeKalb is a wonderful place to live so those who are here could um, make a living. I also feel that we need more things for our children. We need more activities. We need to keep our tax dollars here in town. So if we have investors that want to come in to invest more in our children, I think that would be wonderful. Thank you. Again, Monica Leary, vote April 7th. Thank you. That is Monica Leary. Now a closing a statement from Craig Roman. I pledge to bring the actions of the City Council to the people. I will bring a fair and unbiased reporting to the quarterly meetings that I would hold and encourage open dialogue with the residents. I will gain valuable insight on what is important to the residents, and one of my first actions will bring the budget discussions to the residents. If we will be facing budget cuts, I want the citizens to be involved and informed of what we as a community would be facing. I look forward to a long and beneficial relationship. I just ask for the opportunity to serve. Please vote for me, Craig Roman, on April 7th. And Thank that you. is uh, Craig Roman, and those are your candidates for DeKalb City Council, Ward 7. Early voting is uh, underway. Uh, you have that option to vote. And then, of course, you can go to the polls on uh, Tuesday, April 7th.